What's going on guys? Mark from Finished Finish Mobile Detailing. And today we're gonna to show you how the process is to clean these wheels and show you the best results. Let's get to it. So I just give it a good rinse to get any of the debris or anything on the surface of the wheel. So we lessen the chances of scratching it. So now we rinsed the wheel, got rid of all the debris. Now we're gonna use solution one to one for the tires to get all that browning or any silicone on the tires. So what I do, dip it. We're gonna agitate the wheel and that's good. So we just finished cleaning the wheel. Now we're gonna start the process of the rim. Right now I'm gonna use acidic cleaner. This, these wheels are pretty bad, are pretty caked on. So a, a regular cleaner like a degreaser or an iron remover won't do, or won't be as effective. So I'm gonna use an acidic cleaner. And we're gonna spray the acidic cleaner everywhere. Get all that brake dust away. An ideally thing too is to look on the top, spray enough because whatever is up, it goes down. So sometimes when we're cleaning the wheels, you'll miss spots right here because you didn't spray enough cleaner of your choice. So I got everything covered with the, the chemical. Now I'm gonna do a wheel woolly. I feel the wheel woolly is better at cleaning heavy brake dust from the wheel. The issue is you have trouble trying to fit it in here because the brake caliber, there are different options, but I know sometimes it's still not gonna fit. So that's where the easy brush comes into play. So now I just slide that in. Fits perfectly, so definitely have both of those tools in your arsenal. And I always like to just double back on everything just in case. You missed a spot. And a good tip too, so you see the foaming action when I do agitate the wheel. I put an ounce to two ounces of soap in my bucket for more lubrication. The house with less scratching. It makes everything glide easier. And now we're gonna go on to the, the Will Wooly face brush. This one runs about like $40. The reason why I like this one, because it gets through every single groove and crevice. It's like a big paint brush. So I'm gonna hit the face of the wheels, add shape that. Then I'm gonna move on to my wool mitt. Just a double back. Making sure everything is clean. Everything got a contact wash. Lastly, I'm gonna use a paintbrush for the lug nuts just to make sure we got every single part. I like to get the wheels super dialed in. Really, really, really clean, glossy compared to the other wheel, but we still have one more step to go. A lot of people do forget this step. I like to spray the solution inside the wheel wells that have the plastic liner inside. You come through with your brush, agitate it, Say if you can't reach the back, you come through with the wheel wheelie again. Get it all dialed in. And make sure you always dip your, your tools in, in the bucket to get any debris. So that wheel's all dialed in. Super, super clean. You always double check your work. Good to go. And yeah, the reason why I chose the Exidic Cleaner is because this, this wheel was super, super caked. So whatever I hit or spray in the wheel, is going to work, the chemical is gonna work itself as well. And I'm working with the chemical, so it comes out super clean. There's no issues, no, no brake dust, no debris. Solid, everything is clean, good to go. So yeah, we showed you the process of how to clean the wheel. Now we're gonna move on to the rest of the wheels and then work our way to the body and then we'll show you the after results. All right, Mark. So, what do you gotta tell the detailers that are saying right now, Mark, that's too many steps. You're doing too much for the tires. So I build a process that I feel that's stress-free. You do take these extra steps, but remember when you do wheels like this and you get it all dialed in and then you start looking at the wheel, you're like, damn, I already shined the tire. I already washed the car. I don't want to do that. But like I said, these extra steps are good to take so you don't have to have a 
a headache later when you start finishing up the car. Or I don't know if you guys ever seen you doing a wheel and then when you move the car a little bit, you see the, the places that you didn't hit. So I always feel extra steps are good because one thing people are going to look at is the wheels when they do clean the car. Like for instance, car wash people, when you take it to the car wash, they usually clean the face of the wheel, not the inside of the barrel. So when we detail, we look at the body and then the wheels. So I think that's a big factor. And to make sure you got every single thing dialed in and it's a good result. I feel like your clients will be really, really happy about that. Another tip for you guys as well, when you do any wheels or any anything clean a car, I always recommend putting it on the side of the street. Right here, this is a brand new house that's really just built. So you don't want to have staining or any uh, discoloration on the surface. And then it will be a headache for you. The reason why I do this is because I learned from my mistakes. So a long time ago, we did a car in Chino Hills. Uh, we hit the wheels. And you know how you see all this browning from the tire that's coming on the, on the concrete? It's not necessarily like anything that you're doing wrong, but you always got to take precautions because when we're do detailing the car in Chino Hills, it left like staining and streaking. The, the driveway was already dirty as well, so it wasn't brand new. But the client didn't really like that, that we kind of left staining on the on the driveway. So what we had to do, we had to go buy like a pressure washer uh, attachment and hit his whole driveway and stuff. So that's thing, what well, we did take care of the customer, but that's something to look forward to or be cautious in the long run just because you don't want to run into that issue. All right, guys, so now we're moving on to the body. I've been testing out this method for newer cars. What I like to do is get the solution, spray the bottom of the, of the panel. This is where all the debris hangs out and rinse it off so it kind of eliminates the debris. And yeah, just repeat the process on this side. Now we're gonna use Hyperwash from Meguiar's. Two ounces of Hyper wash in this bucket. We're doing a two bucket method today. Wash mitt. You always wanna start from top to bottom. Reason why you start from top to bottom to get or have any less chances of debris scratching the surface. A lot of people are asking me in the comments, what's the best soap that they should use? And I feel like Hyper Wash is the best one. It's a versatile um, soap. Could be used for ceramic coated cars, wax cars, non-wax cars, anything. It's all purpose soap, I think. And the dilution ratio, I think it's like 500 to one, so. 500 to one? Five to four, 400 to 500 to one. What? So. Oh, you're getting your money for over there. Right, so say for instance, uh, I buy like a soap from, I don't know, some, some brand. And usually you look on the back and it says dilution ratio 100 to one. So it's four to five times stronger than the average soap. So anybody that's interested in the products that I'm using, I'll always post them on the description down below so you can check it out. And when you do purchase it, you help support the channel and keep us growing. So right now we're doing the express detail. This is my favorite part of the detail just because everybody use a, a chemical, it's a spray sealant. It's a touch of sealant, so it's perfect. So say for instance, I don't know if you guys see that, that water sticking on that panel. So if you do wash the car, it's, it kind of sucks when the water just sticks and when you dry it off, you'd be there forever. So what I do, I work section by section. So what I do right now, I just spray the, the product on there. You gotta work fast because you don't want any high spots. You wanna thoroughly rinse the product just so you don't wanna have any high spots on the surface. So if you see that's already beat it up. Now I'm gonna do the back. So this is the fastest way to protect the vehicle. This is why it's called the express detail for me. Really fast and efficient. So right now I'm quote unquote ceramic coating or waxing the car less than a couple of minutes. And that could be a good add on for you guys' business. If you guys want that, it looks good. Looks glossy, ready to go. Just got to blow dry, hit the wheels, 
and I'm going to show you the process what I use for the tire shine. All right, guys. So now we're going to use uh, Shine Supply decked out, use one to one, but it's in a dynamic dressing bottle. The reason why, just because my bottle got crushed, so I'm just using this one for now. But I feel like it's the same thing. So we're going to spray it on the on the brush. The reason why I like this brush because you can control it. You can get through every nook and cranny in the groove compared to a traditional brush is a little harder. The reason why I pick water-based dressings is they look really good. Um, the only con about it is that when it starts touching water, like over time, if you run through a puddles and stuff, it'll go away like the tire shine. But you don't want a tire shine that's long lasting. I don't know if you guys ever seen, um, well, for detailers, there's a lot of people that use Armorall and you'll see a lot of buildup and it gets built up and build up and build up and your tire gets brown and brown and brown and really caked on. For people that know, know. I did have someone in the comments say, hey dude, you know, a lot of people use that cheap dressing, the water-based dressing that don't last long. But remember like, tire shine, I feel like it's not supposed to last as long because it's, uh, you're gonna get that issue with all that, all that armor or any heavy silicone or oil-based dressing. It's just gonna build up over time. It's gonna be harder and harder for you to get that dressing off the tire. So I feel like why make it hard when they both look the same? I don't know, drop it down in the comments below if you guys use water-based dressing. I know you guys have other opinions, so drop it down below. All right, Mark, so when it comes to tire shine, you have to take into consideration the customer. Right. Some like a matte, some like them shiny, some don't want it at all. Mm -hmm. How do you figure that out, especially with a first time client? So with first time clients, what I do, I ask them, hey, how's it going? I walk them through the process, and I tell them, hey, do you guys like your, your tire shiny, or do you like it with no shine? And usually they do pick shine. Um, but some clients that we do have, that have like JDM cars or showroom cars, they don't want no shine at all. So this is a preference, but yeah, drop it down in the comments below. If you guys offer your clients tire shine or no tire shine, how do you feel about it? Let me know in the comments below. All right guys, so now we walked you over through the process of how I do the wheels. You can check out the results. Check out that water-based dressing looking really, really good. And other than that, man, drop down in the comments below if you guys have any other tips or any suggestions how to clean the wheels. You see me how to clean the body, how I protected it for the express detail. You can see it's super glossy, all dialed in. And make sure to like and subscribe, tune into the videos. We'll be dropping them frequently every week. And make sure to check down below in the description to see all our products listed on there. And thank you for supporting us. We appreciate it.